All right, this is the print head of an Ultimaker DP200. I was having several jam problems with it. Thought I would try and take the head apart since the warranty is already void. Uh, I got into it and I didn't have a couple of tools that I needed. The first piece that I ran into is is uh, this little hex key right here. The smallest I have is 1.5 millimeters and I need something smaller than that. Maybe one millimeter, one millimeter maybe 0.7 millimeters. Uh, whatever it is, I don't have it. The second thing I don't have is the electricity feed to the heating element seems to be connected with some sort of gray material. I don't know if this is a silicone or a heat resistant epoxy. I need to figure that out. But essentially the way this filament is, or the, the way the, the head is assembled, you have this unit here that comes into the heating element which attaches to the print head. Uh, the print head, I do have the tool to, to move that, but I'm not going to since I don't have anything else, but that's an 8 millimeter head with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Uh, and then the the electricity for the heating element comes into this right here and this is attached to the heating element with this key right here. So this is a 2 millimeter 2 millimeter hex And so this this element here binds this gap and holds this uh, this electronic component in place. Uh, this this hex key right here, the small one that I don't have, is what holds the thermistor uh, in place. And you just loosen that, and then the thermistor just pops right out. So I'm going to reassemble this and see if I can get back to where I started. Uh, the heating element electricity components uh, go into the side of the case. Cords go back. Into here and then those will snap in. Just snap in the head when you put it back in place. Um, so this plate goes in like this, goes up flush, and then we'll screw that in a little bit later. In the assembly. All right, so this component right here is spring-loaded. It's the it's the device that shows that tells the head when it's reached the leftmost part of the print area. And this here should also be spring-loaded, and that's what's used in the auto calibration. So once those components are back in place, um, this comes around the symbol here. Uh, this fan needs to go back into the front like this. And then we have this vent here. It comes in right there. I'm gonna put that first screw back in. So this black Phillips head in right there. I want to make sure I don't get any wires caught. Let's 
are free and clear. Test that part still springs. That part still springs. Looks like it should. So I'll get this other here. Lock in the lock in the cooling vent on the side. So those two screws provide the force that way and then there are these four screws Here. Hopefully they're still magnetized. Last piece I'm going to put in, oh dear, desktop is magnetic and this is the magnet that binds the print head in place. That'll, that'll bind there, and then these just go into the plugs and when you, when you remove the casing, uh, put, put the, the clip back in and then the bowden tube. So you have one cooling fan here for the aluminum unit right here, and then you have this vent right here which cools uh, the heating element in the nozzle right there. So that's the reassembly of the unit and hopefully when I get a hex key small enough to handle this piece and some heat resistant uh, adhesive I'll get a chance to take this off and hopefully clean out the, out the inside and improve the jams um, but that's what I have so far and since there's so little information about this printer online in general and the resolution isn't great but I figured I'd put this out there so that anyone else that had the question can see what it looks like on the inside.